All right, so today I want to show you some of the ball python and reticulated python eggs that I have cooking in my incubator. I have almost 50 eggs in there, and it's been almost a month since I put them in there. So I kind of want to take a quick peek at them and see what the condition is. And a lot of times you can tell if they're doing really good. A lot of times they'll be nice and plump and firm and bright white, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully not covered in mold or anything like that. And then if, they're, if you don't have enough humidity, a lot of times they can kind of shrink down. As a matter of fact, when I first started breeding ball python, some of my very first clutches I didn't have enough humidity in there and they dried out so much they got almost completely flat and I was losing entire clutches of eggs from a lack of humidity. So what I want to do is I want to pull those eggs out and I want to show you how I have them set up. I want to show you the eggs in my incubator, kind of how I have my incubator set up and then we'll look at each individual box and see how they're doing. All right, so I actually built this incubator out of a beverage cooler. It's actually six feet tall and it's been doing fantastic. I hatched probably hundreds of snakes out of this thing. And pretty much all the boxes in here are all for my reticulated pythons, all except for one box right here. So the ball pythons, they're about, I'd say about halfway through at about a month. They incubate for 60 days, so we're right at about 30 days for those. And then my reticulated pythons, the incubation time for those is three months. <laughs> so we're only a third of the way through after a whole month, which is kind of crazy. Still have two months to go before they hatch. And you definitely want to go in and check on them and if you have any bad ones to pull them and uh, just get them away from the good eggs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to start with the, uh, uh, the ball python box first. We'll take a look at that one. All right, so I'm going to start with this ball python box. This is actually crossed between an albino pie bred to an albino. So all the offspring should be albinos, 100% het pieds on these. And I actually went in here two weeks ago and I cleaned all the the humidity off of the covers. Matter of fact, uh, you, you <laughs> take a look at that. There's like no condensation on the top, which is kind of surprising. And these guys, take a look at these. Wow, they're kind of shrinking down a little bit. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, I actually had these Wow, so this is the first time I did uh, perlite instead of vermiculite, and it looks like it looks like the substrate completely dried out on these. Uh oh. So I think what I'm gonna do now, <laughs> I'm glad I actually checked these because this is completely dried out. I'm actually gonna mix up some water and then add some more water to the substrate. Because take a look at this, this shouldn't be uh, kind of sinking in like this. This is a bad sign as far as the eggs kind of show up. These should hatch okay, but yeah, they are really super hard and leathery. Not like you'd expect. So I actually ran out of vermiculite and I went to the couple hardware stores and they were completely sold out because it was a seasonal item. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of concerning. So uh, I want to mix up some water <laughs> and I'm going to add it to this box. All right, so the water that I have is uh, reverse osmosis, deionized. It actually came from the grocery store. I put it in a bowl and then I put it in the microwave and I was doing like 10 seconds at a time. It took about 55 seconds to bring it up to 90 degrees. So uh, on this box, I originally used uh, 100 grams of perlite and 100 grams of water. And uh, 10 mils is about 10 grams. So I think I can kind of just kind of squeeze it in the side here. So that's 10. You definitely want to keep it off the eggs. That's 20. And it doesn't have to be uh, perfect as far as where you put it in the box. You can just kind of run it down the side, I guess. As long as it doesn't splash up on the eggs. So that's 40. Uh, 50. I'm, I'm tempted to put on the whole 100 uh, grams back in. Uh, which is probably a good thing. It might actually take a little bit more than that. So this is about 70. 80. <laughs> I can't believe it's completely dry. 90, 
So last week we had enough humidity in there. There's a lot of condensation on the top that I took off. And then just in the last week it completely dried out. So I'm thinking 100 grams might not actually last the last month. So maybe I'll put in another like 50 maybe. Uh, as long as it doesn't rise up and soak the eggs on the bottom, as long as the eggs are completely off of the... I've never actually had this problem before. So that's 30. We'll do two more just for good measure here. Wow, I can't believe that. I'm glad I checked these. Some people say that they don't check them at all, but the problem is, is if you do something like I do, and <laughs> you run out of substrate and you substitute for another one, uh, it can be kind of unexpected like this. Uh, I've seen some people where they complain that uh, they've used press and seal and they have too much of the humidity build up in there. But what I've been doing is just cracking one little edge, just a little bit on the corner, and it seems like it's been working good all up until this box. So this is weird that it completely dried out. All right, I'm glad I checked that. So hopefully that'll be good for the next month. All right, so here is my first reticulated python box. And look, this is what it's supposed to look like with all the condensation built up on the top. I can't believe that one was so dry. I don't know what was going on with that one. This one actually has vermiculite, which I've always used. Uh, it would be interesting to see. I've actually used some perlite on some of these retic eggs. So on this, you want to be really careful that this doesn't rain down on your eggs. Uh, and I like to check it like every couple of weeks to get the condensation off the top. And let's see, so if you actually just kind of pull it tight and lift it up like this, uh, <laughs> it still kind of rains on the eggs. Sometimes you have to kind of go back in and, and clean it up. So there's, it looks like, look at how big these eggs are. <laughs> They're massive, super big eggs. So it looks like we have just a little bit of condensation that dripped on the eggs here. I'll go in with a paper towel, kind of take some of that off. This one is kind of interesting. Looks like it has a little mold. A little mold just kind of building up a little bit on the top. It looks like it got maybe a little bit of an indentation, maybe a little bit of a... Uh, uh, Something like, like the condensation kind of dripped in there and molded a little bit. But look at how big these are. <laughs> and they're super big and firm too. They feel like they're going to explode. They're really super tight. Almost feels like a chicken egg. It's super hard. But normally your snake eggs are really soft and leathery. But those are looking fantastic. After a whole month of incubation, no dimples at all in those. And just looking at the substrate, it looks like there's plenty of water in that vermiculite. I don't think I have to add anything at all to this. So what I'll actually do is I'll go in here. I used to go through and replace all the press and seal, but I found you can just kind of spread it out a little bit and then just wipe it down. I'll get a new, new piece since that one touched the moldy egg. And your eggs can get a little bit moldy. But if it turns completely solid green and really fuzzy and smell really bad, you definitely want to throw them away. As a matter of fact, on, the, uh, on that ball python clutch two weeks ago, I opened the door to the incubator and it smelled absolutely terrible. I knew an egg was bad as soon as I opened the door. And uh, I went in there and sure enough, one of my uh, eggs from that albino clutch had gone bad. So I pulled it and threw it away. I, th I actually threw it away. There was, like, there was no hope for that egg. I've tried to save some eggs like that. You know, if you have just a little bit of mold, you could probably... I think you could just leave it with just a little bit of mold. But if it has a lot of mold, I have never been able to save an egg with a lot of mold on it. So that's what I do is just go and make sure there's enough water. and <laughs> Make sure you don't have any completely dead eggs. Take the condensation off the top and then put the, the cover on. It's definitely worthwhile to go through and check at least every couple weeks on all of your eggs in the incubator. Alright, so this is from that same reticulated python clutch. And it's kind of it's kind of interesting if you looked at right where I kind of cracked this a little bit, you can see it kind of keeps the condensation away from part of the press and seal. 
up on top of this, but you still get pretty much 100% humidity up in here. And you do get quite a bit of water kind of raining down on this thing. Let's see if I can peel this off. Ugh. So, let's see, we have one egg that's looking kind of furry here. There's some interesting colors. <laughs> that's some oranges and some pinks. <laughs> kind of this one right here in the corner. It's kind of looking a little little furry, but it should be okay. Uh, it doesn't smell bad, it doesn't smell bad at all. So you know, you, you, you can pretty much know you have a bad egg that you can't recover. If you open the incubator and the whole incubator just stinks, then you know you have to go in and search for a dead egg. All right, so the other thing you have to be really careful of when you're doing this is that you don't drop your eggs. Uh, I dropped an egg last year and I incubated it anyways. So I only dropped it like, uh, it was only a couple feet to the floor. I accidentally dropped it when I was pulling eggs apart, pulling the clutch from a female and that egg did not survive. So I think that's why a lot of people don't even go in and look at them because they're afraid the, the potential of dropping a box is definitely something you have to be careful of. Because uh, depending on your eggs, it could be your whole breeding area right there in your box. If you have like a really high-end clutch and you drop it, oh, that would be terrible. So definitely want to be careful, especially if you're walking boxes back and forth between the incubator and somewhere else. All right, so this box is the only box I had from my reticulated pythons that had vermiculite, or I mean a perlite instead of vermiculite. And you can definitely tell uh, <laughs> there's not enough water in this one. As a matter of fact, when I picked it up, uh, it's super light. So for some reason, with the perlite, you're losing a lot of the humidity in there, which is kind of crazy. It's really super dry. And this was like the last egg of the clutch. And I completely ran out of substrate. So in this one, I'm definitely going to have to add... Uh, some more in this one but the egg looks really good so that's pretty promising so yeah if you're doing it I guess it's completely different <laughs> if you're adding uh, perlite versus vermiculite there is a huge difference as far as it holding on to the water it seems like this stuff just evaporates the water like crazy and this uh, is gonna go for another two months so I'm gonna have to keep coming back in here I think and adding more water. As a matter of fact, I can almost, I could probably almost just dump some in there. I don't know, I don't know if I want to, if you get brave enough to, to dump a bunch in there, cause then it might pool up. Might just kind of spread it out a little bit. But that's kind of a difference that I did not expect. Uh, when I first started in ball pythons, I did use perlite instead of vermiculite. And I had some eggs dry out really bad and I lost some eggs and maybe that is why because I didn't have enough water in and they dried out towards the end which is a possibility. Of course when I first started breeding I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was just kind of winging it. Uh, it was just pretty much on what I saw on YouTube. So that looks pretty good. I don't know how many that was. <laughs> I guess I'll have to come back in here. Now that I know I'll come back in here probably every week and uh, just top off the water on these perlites to make sure I have enough water. But that's kind of surprising that there is that much of a difference. And there's really nothing to wipe off on the top of this one. It probably would have worked okay on this if I would have completely sealed it without the little gap. But I've had some, last year I had quite a few snakes, I think I had like five or six, that developed in the egg and then died before they hatched. And I thought maybe it was because I didn't have a crack and didn't have enough air in the box. It's one of my guesses as far as uh, trying to eliminate the, the DOA in the shell without the, the snake coming out. So that's kind of my new thing, just a little crack on the, on the corner. It seems like it's been working good, all except for the, uh, the perlite. Alright, so here's another box. This is another reticulated python. And it is on vermiculite. And if you're wondering about the, the cross on this one, I actually bred my purple albino retic to my albino female. 
Uh, and then actually, these contain Super Dwarf and Dwarf. So it'll be pretty awesome to get some Super Dwarf Dwarf combos. Oh, that does not look good. Wow. Oh, uh, that does not look good at all. Wow. That's looking pretty moldy after one month. That's kind of concerning right there. Wow. That's kind of unexpected. Uh, I almost feel like <laughs> I almost feel like I should spray those with something to try to save them. Wow, that's a lot of mold. That's unusual. So I don't know what's going on with those right there. Boy. I don't know if there's too much water. This box is really heavy. Super heavy. Wow. I've seen them get pretty moldy and still hatch. I don't know. These are kind of concerning, so maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll mark this box, put it on a, like a bottom shelf or something, and uh, think about what I want to do with those. I might have to intervene. Uh, I've actually tried to save eggs that are really bad, and I've never been able to save them. But something like this, it seems like you could. I don't know if I'd want to experiment and start spraying fungicide or something like that. Uh, on my eggs and risk the eggs with something like that, but those two might be a good candidate to kind of Maybe play around. I'm gonna definitely mark this and keep an eye on these All right, here's another reticulated python box Lucy actually laid 49 <laughs> eggs 49 eggs one shy of 50 so and then she laid four slugs too on top of that So it was over 50 but all right, so I'm gonna try to keep this water from getting on my eggs. Uh, it's getting all over. Not good. But you can always go in and kind of touch it up a little bit. These are looking great right here. This is what they're supposed to look like. <laughs> well, these look actually better than normally you'd see. Usually, like for ball python eggs, usually after the first month, you'll see a little bit of dimpling in some of your eggs. Some, a lot of times they won't be as uh, as plump as this for the long term. But these are looking pretty good. Definitely want to keep the water off the eggs so they don't mold. And then take the water off the press and seal. This one's pretty, pretty easy. Sometimes if there's a lot of condensation on the side, sometimes we'll get in there and kind of uh, clean up the sides, but on these it seems like it's just on the top And of course I went in there last week and did the same thing. So this is just one week And if you look at the substrate looks pretty good. Although I don't know. I don't know if this would last uh, Two more months with the water in the substrate I'm thinking maybe in a couple more weeks I might have to add water to all these boxes because it's three months. That's kind of crazy. You definitely don't want them to completely dry out. But usually with the vermiculite and the, the 100 grams of water, 100 grams of vermiculite, usually it lasts two months. So I think I'm good for another month on these vermiculite boxes. All right, here's some more reticulated python eggs. And we're doing pretty good, I think. Not too bad. Uh, just a little bit of condensation on one little end right here. I think I'm gonna pull it up from this side. Keep it from going all the way across. Looking really good on those. So <laughs> some years, some years, uh, I had one year that was really bad. I was opening these boxes and it seemed like every single box had a moldy egg. It was absolutely devastating. You never really know. It's like it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's really bad. This time, this box. So far, this clutch has been really good. Just those two kind of questionable eggs. Of course, the uh, uh, the two boxes with the uh, the pearlite. That's kind of concerning too. But overall, it looks pretty good. All right, so we have three more boxes of retic eggs left. 
And wow, this one's looking really good too. Just a little bit of condensation. And it seemed like when I was completely sealing these up without the gap, I would get condensation over the whole top every single time. And it seems like with a little gap, it seems like maybe the, the water evaporates a little bit faster, but I'm convinced you still keep 100% humidity in the box where you don't get as much condensation. Uh, I always thought maybe it would be a good idea to have an opening at both corners, just a little bit of opening. Maybe it would completely eliminate all the condensation. But you kind of risk uh, drying out your eggs at that point. These look, these look like they were just laid yesterday. <laughs> That's pretty amazing after being in there for a whole month. That's pretty phenomenal. And look at how big they are compared to ball python eggs. My ball pythons, I could fit 11 eggs in one of these boxes. And these are so big, you can only fit six. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, so these look like, it looks like, I'm gonna have some snakes here in a couple months. A whole bunch of reticulated python hatchlings. So it looks like some of my ball pythons are gonna lay, but usually they don't start laying for uh, at least a couple more weeks. I don't know what was going on with that albino being so early like that. All right, here's another box of retic eggs. And I actually separated them all when she was laying them. Most of these, I was grabbing them as soon as she was laying them. I stood there for like there was several hours just kind of babysitting her, picking out the eggs as, as soon as she laid them. And putting them right in the box so they didn't have any chance to, to even get stuck together in a lot of cases. So, ooh, this one here. That one doesn't look so hot. Uh, it looks like that one may actually be bad. Take a look at that. It's. It looks like it's slightly discolored. Like it's kind of yellow. It uh, smells kind of stinky. <laughs> I got a good whiff of it. Oh yeah, that's pretty bad. But it doesn't look as bad as some of the eggs. I think it's bad though. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just kind of slide the other eggs away from it. Wow, this is like, these are like really hard. These are all stuck together. I think because I put them in here when I was pulling them out of the female. Wow, they're like super stuck together. It seems like, I don't know, this one didn't have a whole lot of, boy, I almost feel like I need a little bit more water in this one. So, I don't know, maybe I should put a little more water. This one just seems the driest out of all of them. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. Pretty stinky on this one. Not stinky enough to stink up the whole incubator though. I'm thinking on some of these, I think just because the incubation is so long, it's going to dry out on some of these. Alright. That's good. Last box of retic eggs. All right, so yeah, some of these boxes, just a little condensation on the ends. Of course, I went through. It's only been a week since I went through and and wiped down the, the tops, but they're looking really good. Uh, the substrate looks good on this one. It's kind of funny. I don't know. Now I'm starting to <laughs> starting to second guess myself, thinking, boy, maybe I should add water to all these boxes. Uh, maybe I'll wait just a few days, a couple days, maybe a week or so, and then go back in. When I check them next time, I'll add some more water to all these, just to make sure. Uh, you don't want to overflow. I don't know. That looks looks like we got. It looks like we got enough water in there. Just kind of eyeballing it. Just that one box seemed like it was more dried out, which is interesting. But so far, so good. Usually, if you have dried out eggs, they start shrinking down. 
and you'll know you, you don't have enough don't have enough water in there. Like those ball python eggs that we saw at the beginning, that's kind of an indication that they were getting too dry, kind of shrinking down like that. All right, so that's it. So all my eggs looking pretty good. Hopefully we'll have some hatchlings in two, uh, two months we'll have the retakes and then one month from now we'll have a few ball pythons, some albinos, which would be pretty neat. And I'll post all those over on uh, Morph Market if you're interested. I'll probably do a video, of course, when they hatch. Uh, I'll go through and you know cut the eggs and we'll look at all the, the offspring and then we'll put them up in the hatchling rack, which would be pretty cool. All right, thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.